Well, here it is the day after the, the Iowa deer season uh, come to a close on the 11th day of January 2021. And I'm just going to browse around here and not spend a lot of time and just try to videotape the results of uh, the food plot uh, activity. I didn't see any bucks in the late season, and I want to emphasize that food plots are not a guarantee to anything other than the deer will forage on them, but they may not forage when you're in the field. Now this snowpack has been on the ground uh, close to eight inches, and it's been on the ground for uh, since the 29th day of December 2020. So that's right at two weeks, you know. Uh, matter of fact, uh, today's Monday, the 11th, so tomorrow would be 14 days. And uh, it's, so that had an effect on the deer movement because it just lightens the woods up so different and the deer become so paranoid because all of a sudden it's like the lights are on 24 seven. So let's venture down through here and see what the results foraging was on these food plots. This trail, as far as I know, it was created by deer movement up to the clover plot. So we'll traverse up there and see what it looks like because uh, I don't, I don't, I haven't seen any human tracks down here, and there shouldn't been because I was never down here. But in today's day and age, you, you can't take anything for granted. But uh, I'm 100% sure that this was just deer foraging in this funnel. And uh, matter of fact, you can see where they traversed straight up the hill. So uh, let's go up and see what it looks like. Here we come up onto the, the plot itself. And this is white tail has to poop over. And right off the bat. <laughs> oh yeah. They really got after that clover. Like I said, that's eaten clear to the ground. But uh, but the roots are still there. See my foot uh, is and there's still a little green in there. <laughs> But that's amazing how much drawing attraction that clover had. And there's been a few deer on here. And I haven't been down here forever because of the gun season and stuff. And when there's fresh deer here, or I wouldn't say fresh, it's just some. But uh, just trying to show you the drawing attraction of a perennial. Now, they really got after it over in here. And I could say the Whitetail Institute, Clover, and it's really been consumed. <laughs> and when the snowpack melts off, there'll be a lot more foraging because it'll, that clover's underneath it there. And, uh, but boy, there was some intense grazing on that. And remember, this is a perennial. Uh, so you just keep after them, they'll keep giving. There's even turkey track down there. Now that's something rare. You can see that turkey track in the snow there. And, uh, Usually the turkeys, for some reason, I just sort of evacuate this area. But this year they stayed here. I suppose they came in here after the deer pond just opened. And, uh, but, uh, it's just amazing. But boy, that takes some energy. And burning some calories. Pulling through that snow. <laughs> I just thought you'd enjoy that. Ray Scott, founder of Whitetail Institute, was on the cutting edge of technology when he came up with that clover. 
and you got other kinds of clovers out there, but you won't have nothing that has the, the drawing power and the staying power at the White Tail, Tail Institute. I couldn't hunt down here because the wind was always wrong anyway, and uh, Deb would get on me. Oh, they're down there on the bottom. Well, the way the wind blew for <laughs> ever was always out of the north northwest, so this was a no go. So anyway, and you had that snowpack that. It's just, like I say, really hard to hunt in the snow. Definitely animals have an advantage because they can see you a mile and a half away before you even get out of your truck. This next plot that we go up to is going to be really interesting. This was the plot that we had to replant. We had uh, quite a bit of difficulties with it and we originally planted it with pure attraction and part of it did good but we were in a drought so we had to replant some areas but, and this is an annual so we'll venture up here and you can see this trail has been used quite heavily we'll travel up here and see what this looks like and i'm doing this not for myself bragging rights or anything i'm doing this for people that want to do the food plot thing and so much more to food plots than throwing seed on the ground and sitting back hoping to kill something big. It's just the enjoyment of doing it. And here again, this was this stuff here was the turnips you can see where they were consumed. They pawed down and ate them. And there's still probably a lot of green under here. Now that's supposed to get up in the 40s this week, and if it does, it's going to uncover a lot of this. But you can see the grazing went on those turnips. Was they've ate, eaten the tops, and they've eaten into the, the tuber or the turnip itself, and um, it's been quite a bit of grazing going on in here. That's for sure. We'll walk down here. Uh, boy, I'll tell you, like I said, that, that, that vegetation is still underneath of there. All it has to do, and you can see how frozen the snow is right there. It would hold up a little here. They wouldn't fall through there. So, and I'm walking on it now, so it's quite froze. It, uh, but boy, they really got after it. And that's what I'm trying to Oh, analyze the results. You all seen it when it was bare dirt. You seen it when it was grouted out. And it, then we got to where we recovered. And it, uh, and keep in mind now, this is an annual. So it won't have the resilience of the perennial. You'll have to replant it next, next year. Well, I'll tell you. There's been some deer activity down here. And it's just so good to, to follow up for you people, especially you dedicated viewers. I uh, really appreciate your viewing. It's really been hard to get down in here because of the wind direction. It was basically straight north. And, uh, boy, they stomped that down in there. Of course, you gotta remember one deer's got four, four feet, so. But uh, they had made a trail up here. I say hey, it's too early to be antler hunting, but uh, the snowpack does give me an indication of travel pattern movement and stuff. Plus, I wanted to change out. Uh, trail cameras, so this is the day to do it. First day to sunshine in about two weeks also. Uh, my little diversion up there worked pretty good. I put the deadfall tree right there, and I'm at the Y. Some went there, but they didn't go, they didn't do that. And the reason I did that, just for a hunting tip for you, but I was trying to make a diversion. Some, You've seen on some of my videos 
the diversions failed. But this one works. And what it did is it diverted the deer off to this direction uh, to get onto this field. And uh, that was pretty awesome. And boy, look at the green in there. And that's, this is really going to get hammered again uh, when the snow melts off because that, that snow insulated it. And uh, it's really going to. But I wanted to bring the deer out here into this area. And you can see that little diversion did that. It brought them right out there. But boy, they, they were really in here. And they'll be back because when this melts off, that stuff is going to pop. Well, now here's this food plot was planted in 2013. And it did a tremendous job. And it's all. Uh, um, Whitetail Institute Clover also. But you can see the lack of gravitivity to it. There's been a few deer back here, but very little grazing. And that's a good indication when you got a snowpack like this that it may have lost its drawing power. It wasn't apparently worth the, the calorie burn, per se, or loss of digging through that to get it. So, um, maybe time to flip this one. And that's what you got to do. You got to start thinking now on your food plots for the year 2020, not at the spur of the moment. Boy, there's something. That must have been a piloted woodpecker, because ever what put that hole in that tree. That's phenomenal. Phenomenal. They really got with the program there. Here was a plot, alpha rack, and there's some foraging over there, but for the most part, very little to none back here. They had one spot there dug out. And then, as you can see, no foraging whatsoever. And then over here was another little spot. But basically, no grazing going on at all. So that gives you an idea that maybe you gotta flip this spot too. Heck of a trail going here. <laughs> funny part about it is, if it is funny, I used to have a stand right there in that tree, you can see the ladder. Uh, so many places in so little time. I mean, you know, can only do stuff, but you can see this is what that this is what that tree was all about. Uh, and as I can pan up there, you can hopefully you can see that ladder. And on that north wind stuff, I would have been directly on the trail. But there again, I think most of that movement was nighttime. And I'm so glad in real time, in real life, be able to take you along and just show you the result of this. Now, these deer were definitely trailed up here. There was trails all going straight to the cornfield. But just because you had a cornfield or a food plot doesn't mean you're going to kill anything but time. A lot of people think if they do this, do that, this is all going to pan out and they're going to kill the big one and it's, it's guaranteed, and you read it on the package of the bait, dope the deer, uh, you dump this on the ground. Well, that's not true. That's uh, what that called is advertisement. And uh, they'll tell you anything. Like I said, this trail was probably made under the cover of darkness. Here's where we planted uh, forage oats, and we really had a pretty good, you can see where they've been pawing out. I missed that deer over here, and I shot a deer up here. But, uh, but they really, you can see the tracks here, you can see the destination. This is where they were going, that's for sure. And, but did you kill anything? 
Nope. Did you learn anything? Yep. It's so good to show you the results of that stuff. Doing all that work is good because you're giving back to the whole ecosystem benefits from your work. But it's no guarantee that you're going to kill the monster buck. But uh, you will learn that. And that is so good to take you along and hunted that late season and hunted hard and never had a buck uh, ever traverse past a stand that I was in. So that was pretty fun. Well, here we are up here at the cornfield. You can see the four jotes that they've dug out. And uh, this was an area that we had to replant and came along real, real good. Uh, it just it was a trying year in 2020 all the way around. And, uh, but you can see the deer have been up here pawing this out. Possibly the turkey also may have been doing some of this. But the cornfield on this end is, I want to show you why you have to plant a lot of corn. Because you venture up here, oh boy, corn costs a lot to do. But boy, I'll tell you what, on these end rows, these is where it gets forged at first. And you can see they just devastate this. And the deer track just can run amok in here. Uh, and some of this predation on this corn uh, was done earlier where it's knocked down. The coons climbed up on it. But uh, that's what you have to expect because you put it out there. In a, but the nice thing about it, over a bait pile, all this has been ravished. It's all been consumed. And so the deer will quit coming into this area. So they're not constantly feeding in the same pile of bait every night and day. I mean, you have coons in here. It's just, it, it just, Devastated, but keep in mind, I want to venture on up here. You're starting to see, oh, we haven't walked probably, uh, that's, we haven't walked a bunch of corn 50 yards into this field. As you get up here, you start seeing the van why you have to plant a lot of corn. Because now, this is the 11th of January. We haven't had any extreme cold weather, uh, but boy, when we do, we got plenty, plenty of nutrition for not only the deer, but the turkey. And like I say, when you start on the end row, the end rows get harvested he uh, he heavily. But as you get on up in the middle of your field, you're going to see, you're going to start wishing <laughs> for some consumption because there's a lot of corn up through here but there again we got a long ways to go and if we get in sub-zero weather those bucks will gravitate and the does especially the does because they're pregnated and uh, they're going to need numerous numerous bushels of late season forage and there again I'm proud to say I didn't kill anything off of this field, uh, but it sure got the food source. There's a lot of corn left for uh, the 11th of January. Now we got one other area I want to take you over and show you. And here's where we came back in and overseeded. We planted this with destination, and then we that we hit that drought. But uh, you can see it's been got the forage oats in it and some beets and greens up here. Right in here was the forage oats. As we go up here, boy, they've been out in this diversity. 
several different plants. Just don't rely on one. But you can see how we put this strip in here between the, the corn. Now this corn over here, this is completely consumed. That's why it's important. I mean, there ain't nothing in that. It's just stock residue. Well, boy, when we got out here with the Whitetail Institute Beets and Greens, oh, man. They're, they're, look at that size of that turnip that was in there. My God. But it, they're just awesome. There's another one. And there's the deer poop back it up. Not bullshit. That's... Well, that, that, that's uh, research equals results. That's deer shit, not bullshit. And there's the proof of the pudding. Here's what I want to show you. That's really, really interesting. That's a hedge apple, a hedge tree, laden with hedge apples all summer. And if you, this has just been gleaned. I mean, they came out, and you've seen on some of my later videos. Now, there's still some laying on the ground. But they're really, they're really after them. And the squirrels come in and eat these too. But this is a natural food source uh, that you don't want to, you know, a lot of people, oh, I'd just knock that hedge tree down. Well, if you did, you just knock the natural food source down. Because uh, they really, really get after it. Uh, it's just phenomenal. But you got to have variety. I uh, was venturing over here for a reason. A lot of people don't like these trees, and I understand that. These are thornwood trees, and I was trying to find the pods, but there's a lot of deer poop underneath of here, and they've been pawing those uh, pods out because they're highly nutritious to them also, and it's a natural food source. You can see where they've been digging them out. I, hopefully, if I'm lucky enough, this must be a coon tree too, because they've carried the corn back in it here to this tree. But uh, hopefully, I'll find one of those pods. These bean pods, deer love them, and they, they just go crazy over them. And the, 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 there's a bunch of them on this side of that tree. But they will consume every one of those. That, uh, so a lot of people, like I say, eradicate thornwood trees because of the damage it can do to you and to the tractor equipment. Uh, pretty, pretty hard on tires. But anyhow, they did get underneath there and do some forage. Well, that's going to put a wrap on it. Diversity. The more different blends you have, the more tractability you had. But I'm going to tell you one thing right now. When you're buying them food plot seeds, and this ain't no commercial for Whitetail Institute, but I'm going to put it the way it is. They're the number one in the business. Go with them. You'll get the most food for your money. So that's it from the late season food plot survey.